Hey everybody, I'm Olivia. Nice to meet you. I review perfumes, so if you're into that sort of thing, keep on watching. So today we are going to talk about a house called Juliet Has a Gun. Now, they are technically a niche house, but they're an actually affordable niche house, which is, that feels like an oxymoron, right? Like that feels like it should not go together, but you're able to get them at Sephora. Um, which it's like, how is it a niche house if they're sold at Sephora? Well, they are, they're considered a niche house. So I have the discovery set and I want to go over the fragrances with you. And I have their new fragrance, which is going to be one of the things that we talk about first. So this is Magnolia Bliss. I want to read you guys the description that they have on the website because I think it's so cool. With the troubled times we're going through, I am desperately looking for some blissfulness. I think we all are. Here comes Magnolia Bliss, where I imagine Juliet as a free as that famous summer of 69. My flower power heroine falls for a bohemian spirit without forgetting, as always, her rebellious nature. Peace. So I thought that was a cool description. The notes that they have listed here are bergamot, magnolia, mirabelle plum, and musk, and it's categorized as a fruity floral. So to me, I'm gonna spray a little on my hand here, and they have the best atomizers. This is not my first full-size fragrance from this brand. Look at this atomizer, it's so good. Ooh, yes, okay. So off the top, and I think when you look on Fragrantica, you might get this, but I believe they um, put ginger in the descriptor, and I personally do get a nice, slightly aromatic, spicy ginger right off the top. It smells very crisp, a little sharp and clean. And as this dries down, you get that beautiful magnolia flower coming through. You get some citrus and you get a mild sweetness. If you like those shampoo-y type fragrances, I think that this one is worth giving a go because I find this to have something almost like a shower gel or like a fruity, fruity floral shampoo type scent to it, but it actually lasts. And a lot of people have told me that they've had like issues with longevity from this house. And there's a couple in this uh, set over here that I'll talk about that I feel like eh, the longevity's maybe not good, but the, the Magnolia Bliss, I found it lasted for about six and a half hours for me, which for me, that's pretty good. And I actually got a nice compliment. So I wore this and I wore it to hang out with my husband has a new job. And so I, I went to hang out for the first time with his coworkers and I was the only one dressed up. And I felt so dumb. Like I, I was, I had like a dress and heels on and everyone had just gotten off work and they were like, Oh, you look nice. Why? why? <laughs> and I was wearing this because my outfit literally matched this bottle. It had like the yellow and the pinks and I felt so stupid, but I also was like, you know what? At least I'll be the best dressed in the room and smell the best. And so when I left, because I was like, you know what? It's his coworkers, let him have some fun. I left and I was like, all right, you have fun. He texted me later and he said, that new perfume you were wearing smells so good. I can still smell it from when you hugged me. So I so much as hugged him goodbye, not even like a big old embrace, right? Just like, a, all right, babe, see you at home. And he said it rubbed off and stayed on him the whole time because one of his coworkers was like, you smell good, dude. And he was like, oh, that's not me. That's my wife had that on. So if you're looking for something fruity floral that has a little bit of like a nice gingery note to it and something a little uncommon instead of being like the run of the mill jasmine or ylang ylang or gardenia, this is magnolia. So a little interesting touch there. Highly, highly recommend this one. Now let's move on to this cool, interesting little set. So to tell you what I have in this one, not a perfume, pear ink, musk invisible, not a perfume, super dose, vanilla vibes, lip, lip, lipstick fever. Mmm. It's literally called M M M M. Mmm. 
and Lady Vengeance. So the first one that we're going to talk about is called Not A Perfume. I have a big bottle of this. I have actually had to buy a second backup bottle because I love it that much. So to tell you guys about that fragrance, it is a singular note fragrance. That's why they call it Not A Perfume. So what it is, it's Cetalox, better known commercially as Embroxin, even though technically they have slightly different molecular structures, but that's what they go by. This was a fragrance note that was synthesized in the 1950s to replace a very expensive product called Ambergris. And if you guys don't know what Ambergris is, strap in. Ambergris was a product that they used in a lot of fragrances that comes from the intestinal tract of a sperm whale that is regurgitated by the sperm whale, floats to the surface, and after it ages for some time, takes on a sweet, woody quality. Kind of nasty, right? But there are some very bizarre notes in a lot of fragrances. So this was used in so many fragrances. It's great for the longevity. It's great to give it some sweet muskiness. But as you can imagine, incredibly, incredibly expensive. So they synthesized the note Cetalox or Ambroxan. And not a perfume, which I have right here. Mm. To me, it is a slightly sweet, musky fragrance that is a skin scent that almost smells like sexy pheromones. This would be appropriate if you work in a setting like an office where you're not allowed to wear fragrance or in the healthcare industry where you're working with people with sensitivities. The nice thing is, is Cetalox or Ambroxan is a hypoallergenic note that's shown to not give people headaches like a regular perfume note. So this is wonderful if you have a lot of sensitivity, but there's one thing that I have to cover. And that is, this is a note that I have had many, many people tell me that they can't smell it. And I don't know what that is, but some people cannot smell the note of Ambroxan or Cetalox. I can smell it, even if I can no longer smell this on myself. I'll just like take off my coat or something and they're like, oh my God, you smell so good all the time. And they won't even recognize that it's a fragrance. They'll be like, mm, you just have great smelling skin. And I'm like, nobody has great smelling skin, sweetheart. The alliteration on that was really hard on my mouth. <laughs> so this comes with um, a traveler of that fragrance and then it comes with Super Dose, which is actually the same thing, same makeup, it's just stronger. So these two are the same thing, just different concentrations. So the next one that I wanna talk about from this is called Pear Ink and it's green pear and musk. So right off the top, you get this sweet, dripping, juicy pear that has a slight tartness and it's not overly sweet because if anyone has bit into a pear, it has that delicate sweetness. It's juicy, but it's not syrupy and annoying. So to me, it's the perfect fragrance note. And then it's ground down with these musks. And let me tell you, the dry down of this fragrance is intoxicating. The, let me back up, not even just the dry down, but the entire everything of this fragrance is so, so good because it's fruity, but it's not juvenile because it has that rich, delicate, musky dry down that is very adult. It doesn't read like, oh, this is childish. So if you've kind of strayed away from fruity fragrances for that reason that you're like, eh, I don't want it to smell like a body splash. This one does not. It does not. But here's the problem. For me, I only get about three to four hours of longevity. Unfortunately, the longevity for me, it just is not there. But I mean, the fragrance is just so good. It's like one of my tops out of this entire thing. So I wish the longevity was just a little bit better, but I still think it's worth a shot. 
The next one we're going to talk about is called Vanilla Vibes, and this has natural vanilla, sea salt, and musk. So much like the last fragrance, it has that beautiful musky dry down. But if you guys like are like me, and you fell into the hype of Olympia by Paco Rabanne because you were expecting this amazing salty vanilla, I hated that fragrance. I hated it. I still have it and I want to get rid of it, but I've been holding on to it just for video's sake. But I'll tell you this, this is the vanilla that I wanted. And I know a lot of people online say that it's too salty. I don't agree. I think the salt with the musk and the slight bit of warm vanilla in there, it warms it up and sweetens it up enough, but it's not a terribly super over feminine vanilla. It is that like warm, surrounding, comforting vanilla. And I think the amazing thing about this line in particular is these are fragrances that they meld with your skin. So they don't scream fragrance, fragrance, perfume, perfume, perfume. No, they make you smell like you are the sexiest person that ever existed. So if you want your skin, but better with like a salty vanilla, summertime vibes, oh my God. Vanilla vibes, that's the one. That's the one. If you, if you were disappointed with Paco Rabanne, try this. And the longevity on that one is better than Pear Ink. But it makes sense to me because vanilla is a heavier, denser note than Pear. The next one we're gonna talk about is called Musk Invisible. And that is Jasmine, Cotton Flower, and White Musk. So this one is a very fresh and clean musk. And this one, I would say, is along the lines of not a perfume, but it dries down to have a little bit more masculinity, and it smells like slightly masculine pheromones along with clean laundry, which I'm just like, yup, throw it in the bag. I need a full bottle. Like, <laughs> This one is underrated. I hear nobody talk about it. And I will say though, it's polarizing because when I said something about it on TikTok and I said that I loved it, a lot of people were yucking my yum because they were like, no, that one's so masculine. I hated it on myself. And I'm like, you know what? Well, that's for you. But as I'm saying, to me, it makes me s smell a little bit like a, like a hot man who was out doing like a little bit of like, he was in the sun sweating a little bit and then he came inside and put on like a crisp white shirt. And so you smell the fresh clean laundry, but then you smell like hot man skin. <laughs> I sound like a murderer right now. Oh my God. Okay, so do you see how red I'm getting right now? Woo! Obviously this had a visceral reaction on me, friends. Next, let's talk about mmm. So mmm has neroli, raspberry, orange blossom, and iris butter. Now, this one I have not worn on skin yet, but I have smelled it on a friend of mine, and I have tested it out on paper. So I haven't, um, I haven't quite used it on myself yet, but I'll tell you what I get out of this. So when you first smell it, I think that iris really comes through. This is a powdery scent. It's almost got like a, like a makeup type quality to it and that neroli comes through. So if you're not into powdery fragrances and you're not into white floral, this will probably not be for you because this is one of the stronger ones of their fragrance line. I personally don't get much of that raspberry. I get a little bit, but I'm mostly getting the, the orange blossom, the neroli, and the iris. And so this is very powdery. It's very white floral. It's fluffy. It's very slightly sweet. And I would say that this has a little bit of a, a, a slightly vintage appeal, which I personally love. I think that word uses a negative connotation too frequently where people are essentially saying, oh, it smells outdated. I don't agree. It's just a more vintage profile, but she's good. She's very good. She's very femme and she's very sophisticated and she's an established woman. Yeah, 
If, if you want to be all of those things, mmm, mmm is for you. Next up is another one that I haven't tried on skin yet, but this is called Lady Vengeance. So let's check out the notes. So this one is in a black bottle, so I think it's supposed to be evoking a darker emotion. So we have Bulgarian rose, patchouli, and vanilla. And to me, I find this interesting because although it is supposed to be a darker, richer, a little bit more nighttime fragrance with that rose and the, the patchouli bringing it a little bit more of the green, dirty element, I find it kind of fresh and a little light to be like a black bottle and be called Lady Vengeance. But that being said, I have not used it on skin. But to me, I definitely smell the light waxy rose. I smell a little bit of a dirty patchouli in there. But I really don't get much of that vanilla. And that might be because I'm not wearing it on skin. It hasn't had time to dry down. But yeah, this is kind of a classic shipper fragrance a little bit. So if you like that classic format, if you like a rose fragrance, I think this is really nice. But to me, out of the group, this one did not stand out that much. Um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't want a full bottle. And I am a rose fan, but the very last one I'm gonna talk about is a rose fragrance that I'm gonna need 14 bottles of immediately. Oh my God, I stand corrected. It's not rose, it's violet. Hear me out. This is called Lipstick Fever. And this is violet, raspberry, iris, and patchouli. This is like sophisticated makeup scent. It smells like a waxy lipstick, like a L'Oreal lipstick, or an even like higher end lipstick but then it almost dries down to have a muskiness and I'm really surprised that that's not listed because it most certainly has that type of dry down. But I am telling you guys, this is the most, in my opinion, full bottle worthy out of this entire discovery set. Like I am crazy about it. I don't think it's a fragrance that a lot of people talk about, but if to you there's something so incredibly nostalgic about smelling like a fresh tube of lipstick. And it's like, hmm, I'll try not to get emotional, but like my grandmother passed when I was four and I have limited, <laughs> you see my eyes get teary. Sorry, I'm such a sensitive sap, but like I have very limited memories. But when I smell that lipstick smell, I smell this pink lipstick that I gave her when I was a kid. And I think that this just, it's, instant time travel. It's like such a warming, incredible fragrance. And so if you have a really powerful memory attached to the scent of lipstick like I do, that could move you to tears on camera for Christ's sake, then it's totally worth the full bottle. Like I think that will be the next full bottle that I'll purchase from them. So if I were to suggest three out of this whole set, I would say, Pear Ink, even though it doesn't last great. I would say Lipstick Fever because amazing. And I would say Vanilla Vibes because summer is right around the corner and I am looking for that, that feeling, you know? <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed today. I hope that this gave you some good ideas of this house. I absolutely love this house. So I highly, highly suggest that you guys check out some of these fragrances if they sound up your alley. And I hope to see you guys in my next video. If you have tried, comment down below your favorite fragrance. Bye.